This video talks about uh, cimetidine, its mechanism of action, clinical use, and toxicity. So let's first talk about uh, mechanism of action. So imagine that this yellow, th sorry, this, uh, this blue uh, cell, this is the parietal cell. Okay, so imagine this is the parietal cell. So I'm going to talk about other mechanisms as well, how release of uh, proton happens from the parietal cell. So what happens is that this is our vagus nerve. Let's say the vagus gets stimulated when we have food in our body, food in our GI tract through distension and through the taste sensation. Let's say our vagus gets stimulated. The vagus in turn is going to stimulate our M3 receptor. Okay, so this is our M3 receptor. It gets stimulated. Now M3 is part of the um, GQ pathway, right? How do we know that? Because we have the um, beta 1, sorry, not beta 1. Uh, we have uh, have, have 1 M and M. You're familiar with that mnemonic, right? H1, alpha 1, B1, M1, and M3. Those are all part of the uh, GQ pathway. The GQ pathway is going to secrete uh, or it's going to increase the level of IP3 and calcium which in turn is going to stimulate the hydrogen potassium ATPase. Okay, so that's how the vagus is going to stimulate this, the release of hydrogen ions or protons onto our gastric lumen causing, you know, increased acid secretion. So this is one way. The vagus also stimulates the gastrin releasing peptide which is also going to stimulate the G cells. The G cells is going to get uh, is going to then stimulate the CCK8 receptor, and this receptor is also going to work through the exact same mechanism as Vegas because see Vegas is working this way or that way, whichever way Vegas works is going to produce more IP3, which is going to again stimulate more potassium hydrogen ATPase. Okay, but these two mechanisms are not associated with um, with our cimetidine. The one that is associated with, that, associated with our cimetidine is the enterochromaffin like cells, which is going to stimulate the H2 receptor. Okay? Now, when this H2 receptor gets stimulated, it's going to release CAMP. Now, the CAMP is in turn going to um, also increase the release of uh, proton by acting on the exact same, um, exact same. Um, Sim uh, antiport, which is our hydrogen potassium ATPase. Now, why is H2 releasing CAMP? Because we know that beta 1, beta 2, delta 1, H2, and V2, those increase, uh, it's going to stimulate adenyl cyclase, and adenyl cyclase is going to increase the level of CAMP, just like I showed here. So, this mechanism, this release of um, CMP by stimulating the hydrogen H2 receptor, this is inhibited by our cimetidine. Okay, so there is the inhibition happening. So the mechanism of action of a cimetidine is that it blocks H2 receptor, right? So that's the mechanism of action of uh, cimetidine. Now let's talk about the clinical use of cimetidine. So the whole point of uh, having cimetidine is that it is going to decrease uh, the level of protons in the blood. As a result, we'll be using in in uh, diseases where we are going to have where we want less uh, protons being secreted into the stomach. So let's say where which scenarios are those? Those are GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease, peptic ulcer disease, and gastritis. These are some of the three very very common examples of where we're going to use cimetidine. Um, so those are the clinical use of cimetidine. Now let's talk about the toxicity. Now, whenever we talk about the toxicity of cimetidine, you know, you know me, I love my mnemonics, but I could not come up with a brilliant uh, mnemonic for cimetidine, but I did come up with something. So you see the C here, and I can write C, or cross blood-brain barrier. There is another C, it can cross placenta. There is another C, creatinine. It's going to decrease the level of uh, creatinine uh, excretion from the body. But this creatinine one is only associated with cimetidine and ranitidine. None of the other um, tidines or deans are going to be uh, affected with the creatinine problem. Only cimetidine and ranitidine is going to decrease the excretion of creatinine. 
So keep that in mind. So those are all with the C's. Okay. Then we have the I's. I would be inhibition. Inhibition of P450. So when P450 is inhibited, what happens? It is going to work faster. It's going to work more. As a result, a lot of the a lot of the hormones that are present in the in the liver is not going to be is going to be metabolized very very easily. As a result, it's going to metabolize testosterone, right? Just like any other hormones, it's going to it's going to metabolize testosterone because it's around for longer amount of time. So when it's going to decrease testosterone, we're going to have some anti-androgenic effects. So let's now talk about what are some of the anti-androgenic effects of uh, testosterone. So we are going to have impotence, we're going to have gynecomastia, there is going to be de decreased libido, and also anti-androgenic effects is also going to increase the level of prolactin. And when pro prolactin level increases, we have gynecomastia, right? That's also going to be there. Now, anti-androgen effects, this effect is one, because of decreased testosterone and another one because cimetidine has or the dean the tadines have a direct effect where testosterone and dihydrotestosterone will not be able to bind to their receptor again causing anti-androgen effects okay so that's going to be there so the one thing we have to remember is that um, there's two anti-androgen effects, uh, the two ways anti-androgen effects is going to be used with cimetidines. In fact, cimetidine or the tidines have been famously used or it has been trialed, not famously used, it has been trialed for um, androgen, androgen, um, androgen induced alopecia. It's, it has been used for prostate cancer. So you can see that its anti-androgen effects is so good that it can be used for those high you know high grade diseases for example prostate cancer or it, it was used for anti-androgen um, alopecia so it's going to be used there so th those are the anti-androgen effects with prolactin the prolactin level is going to be increased because of decreased androgen it's going to cause gynecomastia it can also cause galactoria okay with anti-androgen effects we're also going to have increased estrogen Estrogen is also going to increase gynecomastia, uh, not really galactoria, but it's going to have gynecomastia um, in men. So these are some of the toxicities of cimetidine.